Hi everybody, Mission from Mission Makes again. I think I gave you all a fright when, uh, with my latest video, my latest vlog, when uh, I had a little section with some music on it. <laughs> Apparently, a couple of you said you nearly had a fit when, you, <laughs> when it came on. <laughs> because I'd been doing some low talking and then all of a sudden you got this. I shall try not to do that again. I, When I'm doing it, I put my headphones on and I'm listening to it and it sounds okay on my headphones, but I don't try it out on the TV or, or on my computer. I don't take the headphones off. And of course I'm thinking, well, that sounds okay. It sounds fine. <laughs> Obviously not. Anyway, uh, his Lordship has gone off. He has he normally looks after the granddaughter on a Thursday. It's now Tuesday and he's had to go off because there's been a swapping round of, of, uh, of looker after us and he's doing to do today, Tuesday instead of the Thursday. So I have a free day, but I have two hungry cats. I ran out of dog, uh, I ran out of cat food yesterday and the little black one is constantly coming up to me saying, there's nothing to eat, there's nothing to eat. So I'm off out to get some uh, some cat food and have a little look around a couple of shops because those of you who live in England know about it. Those of you who live in America or Australia might not know, but we have got our free get re we have regained our freedom again. We are all able to go outside. Restaurants not open yet, but you can eat out outside the pubs and restaurants, so that's good. Although we did do a, what you call a recce yesterday. We went for a drive. It all started yesterday, and we went for a drive around the area just to have a bit of a recce to see where, which pubs were open and which ones weren't. We couldn't see much action in quite a few, but I said, well, a lot of those are ones that close on a Monday anyway. But we passed the one that we've been going to when we do our round walk trip. And that one was open and people were sitting outside. They put more tables outside. So it's looking like people are really enjoying themselves a bit more. So um, I'm busy making things. This is what I'm wearing is a boat shirt, which I've had for a number of years. But I love this because it just, I'll move this back to let you see. I love shirts because they just cover what you don't want them to see. I'm busy making another shirt like this. I really like it. What I, the one that I'm making, and I'll tell you more about it. I'll tell you more about it when I come back. But the one I'm making has the uh, raglan colour, the raglan sleeve that goes like that, and I do like those ones. So um, I'll tell you more when I get back. I'm not going to take you with me simply because when I take you with me, I'm going in my little car, my little put put engine. Uh, got a new battery for it, so. All is good. It's uh, it, uh, it. Did I tell you that it broke conked out twice <laughs> on two trips up to the post office because I'm just doing short trips. It conked. The battery went flat, and husband had to had to go up late at night to get to put get it back the first time, and um, because I had to just leave it outside the post office. Have I told you about this? I must have told you about it, but I'll tell you again. The I went up to the post office. It was when the snow was on when we had snow in about February, 
on March, was it February, um, early March? And I drove up to the post office and I'd been doing this little short journey taking parcels. And um, when I went into the, into the, I don't even think, I think I turned the engine off, popped the let, got out of the car, popped the letters in the letterbox and then came back, got in the car, wouldn't start. So I hadn't taken my camera, I hadn't taken my phone and I hadn't got a coat on. So I was absolutely frozen and I had to walk all the way home because I couldn't get in touch with his lordship. And later on that in the, in the evening, because we thought we'd wait until the rush hour was over, we'd go and jump start it. And I jump started. But then a few, about a week or two back, I did the same thing and it just would not go. Wouldn't fire up. He came up with his car, tried to jump start it, wouldn't jump start. So we had to tell the post office that we're going to have to leave it there and would come back and get it sorted. Rang our garage mechanic who said, I think you might need a new battery, but if you can get the battery out, bring it and I'll test it. And so he couldn't, hubby couldn't get the battery out because my car is so old. It's 2007. It's not got many miles on it, but it's uh, with my father living by the sea, everything's kind of got salted with it. And um, so anyway, we could, hope we couldn't get the battery out. So we had to go to the garage and get one of these long um, tools to put onto, on top of the nut and turn, turn it, because he wasn't being able to get it from down below. So we managed to get the battery out, took it to the garage, to our friend Lee, the garage, and he said it needs a new battery. He says you've got 2%, it's just not charging. So we've got a new battery, I'm back to normal, but I've got to go for a longer drive. So every now and again, when I go up the post office, I then go for a long drive through the countryside before I come back. And it's lovely, especially when you've been locked down. A little drive out in the countryside is absolutely fantastic. Anyway, I've talked too long, so I'm going to love you and I'm going to leave you and I'm going to catch you in a few minutes when I get back and I'll let you see what I've got. Bye. Well, I am back from my travels and what did I buy? I bought not a lot. I bought, I have two happy cats now, two very happy cats who have biscuits and who have some meat. They get a packet of meat in the evening, but the only the white one likes that. And I put it out for the black one, but she always turns her nose up at it and what, what disappears off. It doesn't matter what I give her. She does like tuna out of a tin, so I do give her that every now and again. And they've got their dry biscuits. So they are happy cats, very happy cats. I ran out yesterday and I gave them a put a pouch of food down, which the big, the white one ate, but the little black one wasn't happy about. So I gave her some tuna, but the, they look forward to their biscuits as well. So I, I'm pleased I've got the biscuits. Anyway, what else did I buy? I bought uh, some trays for my cupboard just to tidy things up because I'm trying, I'm on a tray thing where I've got a cupboard full of stuff and it's all on the shelf. And I thought, right, I'm going to get boxes or trays. I used up what boxes I had, like shoebox type things or uh, big boxes. And I'm used, I bought a couple of plastic trays from the range, which were very cheap. I'll show you what they look like. And they are going to go on the shelf and get everything in there so that I can just pull them out and take out what I need, rather than have lots of stuff on the shelf. And I also got this. I've actually got a bigger version of, well, not a version of this, but I've got a big one coming so I can put certain things on my sewing desk that I can qu quickly access. And I figured some scissors or tape measure in there, close at hand. I know I've got the other thing, but it's always at the back and I want something that's right next to the sewing machine that I can quickly grab a hold of. So we'll see how well that goes with, with it. This cost me, this was 2 49 and that was 3 49 Yes, 3 49 So not a bad buy some people might say you can get it cheaper elsewhere but i was quite happy with that anyway i'm going to t last night when i went to bed i was looking at my facebook which i don't do very often and all of a sudden a video popped up and it was from so darlington the fabric shop that i told you about uh, a few weeks back and she, obviously we, the shops are all open. She wanted you to see where she was, where she's now positioned because she's moved from the indoor market to the ed, to just on the edge of town. And she wanted to let you see where she was in relation to the roads. And she took you on a tour of inside the, um, inside the shop. 
I then uploaded that onto my Instagram but I also thought well some of you don't use Instagram so you might like to see what it's like and it's absolutely stocked with fabric she has absolutely tons upon tons and it's beautifully set out so I'm going to put a video on after this which you can see what sorry it's so bright here I'm going to put a video on so you can see what her shop is like if you ever make a trip to Darlington and I know some of you do travel far away to try and try different places then her shop is very well worth visiting and of course you do know some of you might know we've become very posh which is a bit of a worry because I reckon this is going to up the prices of the houses because the government is moving the treasury up to our to our town. So all these treasury, I was wondering why we're getting half a million pound houses built here and half a million pound houses there. And I think it's for people who work at the treasury because I've got a hair in my face because a million pound house in London is a little terraced house smaller than mine. A million pound house here is a mansion. It's almost a castle. <laughs> so Darlington, they obviously decided that Darlington is well worth coming to see. I shouldn't be telling you this because you'll all be upping sticks and moving here. But it is a nice area. We're on the edge of Yorkshire as I've always told you. Beautiful place. God's own country is Yorkshire. We are just on the other side of the river from Yorkshire, so we couldn't, it was too expensive to move into Yorkshire, but we moved just south of it, just north of it, just on the other side of the river. So I thought you might like to watch this video, so enjoy. Hi, I thought I'd do a quick video just to show you where our location is. This is the roundabout at the top of Victoria Road. We've got Sainsbury's over to your right, and then this is Grange Road Car Park. So if you come down Northumberland Street, you've got the flats at one side, the park, car park at the other. This is a one-way street, and there we have sofa bricks. I'm going to attempt to go onto the road. And down the bottom you have got Grange Road, so that runs across the bottom of our street. And here is your saw fabric shop, next to Thomas Watson Auctioneers. And this is the old Laura Ashley shop. So I'm going to now take you inside just for a quick tour. So we've got a lot of your curtaining fabrics that can be used for curtaining, bag making, upholstery, we've got masks, these are your cushions or bag panels look absolutely fantastic made up there's over 35 different ones in there with different animals on and this is your dressmaking section so we've got a lot of ribbon there's jerseys down this way so these are all jerseys so I'm just showing you the outside of it here, but we have got a stand in the middle with all different things in as well. You've got polyesters, walls, down here you've got chiffons, viscose, got linens, you name it, we've got most of it. So that is your dressmaking side. I'll take you back out into the rest of the shop. So we've got all your, your moon threads, all your haberdashery. Again, going into your 
nice bright curtain in tapestry range cotton canvases felts pattern weights there I'm going to take you into the back end now again we've got all of your quilting accessories waddings cutting boards in here we have felt no sorry we don't we have fleece we have wools there's more wools there and then we've got a full wall down there of fleece as well and back out Buttons. More cottons around here. A lot of this section here is all your licensed product. So you've got Marvel, Dumbo, you name it. We've got it. More cottons, patterns, and then you've got your full section of cottons going round the outside. And then these islands in the middle are all full of polycottons. So that's just a quick tour of the shop. We have got loads of items in stock, um, but we will be getting more in as and when people ask for anything. So we look forward to seeing you all soon. Thank you. I'm holding this camera so you'll have to excuse the shake. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, she has a wonderful shop. Uh, it was making my eyes go a little bit funny because she's going very fast. And I would have liked to have slowed it down. Slowed it down. But if I had done that, then her voice would have been slowed down too. So um, excuse that. It probably might be best to stand well back. <laughs> But there are some absolutely fantastic fabrics that just got there. You need to form a bus trip and get up there to have a look at them. Right, well, uh, I'm just going to finish this video off by putting a little bit of what we did on Sunday because we went up to Northumberland on Sunday and I thought you might like to see a little bit of what we saw. I'm going to love you and I'm going to leave you and let you watch this next piece of uh, film and I'll catch you next time. Bye! This is just going round the edge of Newcastle City and this is our tallest building in the city. There aren't many tall buildings but it's amazing, this is the biggest one we've got. <laughs> student student um, buildings and flats and things training Newcastle supporters and training Newcastle supporters yes and that's Newcastle United football ground there and down there is the town centre the quiet town centre because the shops don't open till tomorrow there's a double-decker bus Britain's famous double-decker buses amazing buildings for Newcastle because we we never used to have such high buildings they won't look high to some people in some towns and cities
Tamworth, the green area part of the city with the fields and cows on the fields. I think it's uh, one of the most amazing features of this. Yes, it's, it's not allowed to be built on and it's fields where farmers' fields and just across there is the city only a couple of fields away but they're not allowed to build on it and that is Gosford which is not far from Newcastle which is over there you can Newcastle. just that's Newcastle there and then right over there um, it's not so over there oh yes that's Newcastle there as well <laughs> no it goes right the way across Newcastle is a big city why I know why I man? You're going left here. I know man. Oh, oh I missed it. London to Edinburgh. We got here too late. We're going to have a little bet on. Now, will the lights go up or will there be another one coming? Oh, they're going. That's it. London to Edinburgh. All the way up there. Can't even see that it was going that fast. Well, today is Sunday and we are going to go and visit our friends John and Barbara who have sold a house in Tadcaster in Yorkshire and they have moved into my daddy's old house while they're still doing it up so we're going to go and visit them in the little village by the seaside in Northumberland so we'll take you with us and you can see a little bit of what's going on there well that's the top of the village We've missed all the daffodils being out, and, but this is the run along the church and we're just going to go in and tidy up my mum and dad's uh, gravestone. This was where I was married, to my first husband. Not to my, not to him, not to him. <laughs> And look at this beautiful view. The one thing that was said was that they're buried here and they have the most wonderful view if only they could see it. Now then, where is the gravestone? It should be straight ahead. Yeah, shows you how often we come here. Right over there, at the very tip of that beach is where we stop in the summer. You can just see the lighthouse. And here we are, here's the stones. This one here. Mum and Dad, for love as strong as death, Eileen Dussart, my mum, aged 87. Jacques Dussart, aged 94. Because love is stronger than death but needs a bit of a tidy up. 